Welcome to The Life Poetic with Thomas Kiley, your weekly knowledge drop of wordcraft and invocation. This week we're looking at Marina by T.S. Eliot. What seas, what shores, what grey rocks and what islands, what water lapping the bough and scent of pine and the wood thrush singing through the fog, what images return on my daughter. Those who sharpen the tooth of the dog, meaning death, those who glitter with the glory of the hummingbird, meaning death. Those who sit in the sty of contentment, meaning death. And those who suffer the ecstasy of the animals, meaning death. Are become insubstantial, reduced by a wind, a breath of pine and the wood song fog by this grace dissolved in place. What is this face less clear and clearer? This pulse in the arm less strong and stronger? Given or lent, more distant than stars and nearer than the eye? Whispers and small laughter between leaves and hurrying feet Under sleep, where all the waters meet. Bowsprit cracked with ice and paint cracked with heat. I made this. I have forgotten and remember the rigging weak and the canvas rotten between one June and another September made this unknowing, half-conscious, unknown, my own. The garbage strake leaks, the seams need caulking. This form, this face, this life, living to live in a world of time beyond me. Let me resign my life for this life, my speech for that unspoken, the awakened, the lips parted, the hope. The new ships. What seas, what shores, what granite islands towards my timbers and wood thrush calling through the fog, my daughter. T.S. Eliot was born in America and became a naturalised Englishman. His writing career kicked off around 1915 and he became one of the pioneers of the modernist movement. It's a really interesting time in poetry because the rigid structures of the poetic form were giving way to a sort of a, a freer, more open verse style. But here in this poem I think it's really interesting, whereas he's taking on this sort of freer form, you can still hear these rhythmic flows and these rhyme patterns moving through the piece, but in a very relaxed and easy way. He's quite relaxed around the rhyme structures, even though they're very beautiful and almost, to my ear, hip-hop in their styling. T.S. Eliot had a lot of physical difficulties when he was a young boy, and so he was incredibly well-read, and that comes through in his writing often as there's hypertext and there's links going everywhere, and it can be a bit obtuse, um, and particularly as an as a encyclopedic knowledge of biblical verse. Um, but this piece I think is interesting as it gets away from sort of the, the orthodox Christian view of hell and the afterlife. And so he's saying, he starts off naming the four deadly sins, those who sharpen the tooth of the dog, anger, those who glitter with the glory of the hummingbird, vanity, those who sit in the sty of contentment, sloth, those who suffer the ecstasy of animals, lust. Um, uh, they, they die, they, they, all these things mean death, but death is not a banishment to an underworld, it is a, just a becoming insubstantial, it's just this dissolving and disappearing into place, disappearing back into country. Um, and so I think that's a really interesting take on, on what it means to suffer those deadly sins and what the deadly sins mean. And here I feel like he's reaching for something. He's, and it's something that don't, doesn't quite know what it is. He said, let me resign my life for this life, my speech for that unspoken. Everything that I've done, everything I've made of this ship of my own body, you know, it's falling apart, but I've made this. I remember and I have remembered and forgotten. Um, all of it is reaching towards something. It's reaching towards something in this afterlife that it, it somehow if I can perfect myself, if I can make this body and this soul righteous, then there is something waiting for me. Um, and I feel I come across this idea a lot in my own life as like I just think if I can just you know get disciplined, getting up early and eating the right foods and doing all these things, there is something there waiting for me. I'm not sure what it is, but I have this sense of a potential of a life that I'm meant to be living if I can just summon the strength and the discipline to make it happen. The other thing I really love about this piece is when he's pointing towards that thing that he's longing for, he uses this image of the daughter. The, the poem's title, Marina, comes from one of Shakespeare's plays, and it's the character who gets lost at sea, and her father goes mad looking for her in the ocean. Um, 
And so this longing that he feels, this intense longing he feels for something in this afterlife, he give, he, the metaphor he uses is a father's longing for his daughter. And having just had a daughter myself, that has a real particular resonance now. And it really comes from a very deep place and a very deep longing. What seas, what shores, what grey rocks and what islands? What water lapping the bough and scent of pine and the wood thrush singing through the fog? What images return on my daughter? Those who sharpen the tooth of the dog, meaning death. Those who glitter with the glory of the hummingbird, meaning death. Those who sit in the sty of contentment, meaning death. And those who suffer the ecstasy of the animals, meaning death. I become insubstantial, reduced by a wind, the breath of pine and the wood song fog by this grace dissolved in place. What is this face less clear and clearer, this pulse in the arm less strong and stronger, given or lent more distant than stars and nearer than the eye? Whispers and small laughter between leaves and hurrying feet, under sleep, where all the waters meet. Bowsprit cracked with ice and paint cracked with heat. I made this. I have forgotten and remember the rigging weak and the canvas rotten between one June and another September made this unknowing, half-conscious, unknown, my own. The garbed strake leaks, the seams need caulking. This form, this face, this life, living to live in a world of time beyond me. Let me resign my life for this life, my speech for that unspoken. The awakened, lips parted, the hope, the new ships. What seas, what shores, what granite islands towards my timbers and wood thrush calling through the fog, my daughter. This has been The Life Poetic with Thomas Kiley. See you next week.